How's it going everybody? I hope you are doing well today. This video is going to cover the basics of where to embark and draw fortress. The tutorial kind of walks you through a scenario. It picks already a good plot of land for you to go to and it kind of plays out a few things. It doesn't really tell you where to go on your own, what to look for, what not to look for. I've seen people settling like literally right next to necromancer towers and then day two having like undead hordes at them and stuff so i'm just going to kind of go over some things to look for what not to look for and just some general advice and to explain the ui and where to go when you're settling on an embark location so here we are on the world and going north or south depending on where the snow is because snow can be in both it can be in one snow is generally a bad thing uh not that the cold's necessarily bad it's just resources and other little things that you'll find can be really annoying, like things being frozen. You have to dig through ice. Snow, snow's rough. Uh, and I don't just mean snow. I mean, like, freezing tundra, you know. I mean, getting, like, snow in your map or having a little bit of snow because of winter isn't that big of a deal. But, yeah, I would avoid too far north. I would avoid anything that says sinister. So, if you look on the right, it says the jungles of Aline, the continents of Oiling. The continent is always there, and then you got the location above it. Then we got broadleaf forest, warm, heavily forested, thick, and then in purple it says surroundings, sinister. That is uh, generally bad. Uh, you basically have like good, neutral, and evil like territory, like land, if that makes sense. Like you know, if you have like a good, happy forest, there's gonna be like unicorns and fairies flying around, and everybody's happy. And then you got like normal, and then if you got evil, there might be like possessed ints running around and little little goblins and dark things and just little demons you know so paying attention to the surroundings is is key in a lot of things like see here we are in a heavily forest it's calm calm generally means there's not a lot of vicious wildlife or anything else it's calm you know meanwhile we go down see, it's all calm let's see untamed wilds that's gonna have a lot of just random wild stuff going on because it's untamed and there could be all manner of creatures there that are, you know, in that habitat. But you want to pay attention to that. If it's purple, if it's sinister or evil, do we have any evil ones? I don't think so. We got wilderness. Haunted. See, haunted's a bad one, too. You don't want haunted. I'm just trying to, like, refresh my memory. Oh, terrifying. So, sinister isn't as bad as terrifying. And then terrifying, I believe, isn't as bad as haunted. I could be wrong. But that's how I believe. I believe terrifying is the worst. I believe. Sinister ain't too bad. It's like the lowest spectrum on the thing. Yeah, sinister is uh, is the bottom on that. Mirthful. See, so, you know, that's that's good. That's a good one. You want that. That's, that's happy times. But yeah, so then you're going to see all these like things. Like down here, there's a dark goblin fortress. Goblins usually have these little brown pits, the goblin pits. That's where they tend to uh, frolic, so as you can see, all these pits along the river. Humans have little orange hamlets, and then you got the blue monasteries, and then you'll see castles. Elves will be these little plants. <laughs> elves are just plants on top of forests, just greener plants. Those are elves. Your other dwarves are like stone and stuff. So... You're going to pick an area, and it's going to tell you neighbors, and it's going to tell you if they're hostile or not. Like, right here, elves, humans, and the goblins are hostile. Elves and humans generally won't be hostile necessarily, but, I mean, they still can be. And, obviously, if you piss them off, they will be. There's a volcano up here. So, yeah, you just take your time, look at the map, kind of hover over stuff, see what it says, and then kind of go from there. Another thing you can do is you got Choose Origin Civilization. Now, this is going to pick... The civilization of dwarves that you come from when you you because you basically set out from your home faction to go make your own fortress and this is where your home faction will be located generally the bigger the population probably the better but also settling near your home faction is also a good thing because this will affect to a degree how often they're going to visit you with caravans and stuff and it'll also show allies to them as well like these dwarves are actually allies with the elves the swords of uh showering they actually, uh, oh no, they're hostile with the elves. No, they're hostile with the goblins, I'm sorry, yeah. So because these o these elves are green, they are, uh, they're friendly too. But yeah, I mean, it's not a big deal, but it's definitely something to consider. So, another thing, 
Another thing, when you go to embark, you know, it zooms in. You can always get better, like, details of stuff, too, when you zoom in like this as well. You go to embark, and it'll, the highest that lets you go is a 6x6, six six, as you can see here, which is how big the square is. Now, if you're really crazy and want a huge play area, which, hey, you might, what you can do is you can go to the options, because I don't know if anybody knows this. Kudos to anybody that stayed through the whole video. This is your reward. You can increase the maximum embark range up to 16. So you can do 16 by 16 instead of 6 by 6 or default 4 by 4. Uh, mind you, if you do this, I hope your computer's beefy because the deeper you dig, the bigger your fortress, the more lo the lower your FPS is going to be. So just be aware of that. But that is how you do that. That's how you get a bigger play area if you really desire. So that's going to wrap up the video. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoy this content, let me know. I plan to make a few more videos. Um, I want to help new people understand the game and learn the game. I think Dwarf Fortress is really cool. It's uh, really neat, and it's a relic of a long time, of 20 years of development. About, you know, so. Any new players got questions, drop them down below. I'll try to help you out the best I can. I'm not, like, a super professional, but I played Dwarf Fortress on and off for 10 years. So I know a little bit. Not, not everything, but I know most. So I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you later. Peace, guys.